was a, I know this is a challenging year, always for the students. It was a bit challenging for the judges this year because we found that although the bottom teams had moved up quite a bit, you know, the quality of the cars, the top teams weren't quite as good. The level of knowledge wasn't quite as good there as they were in previous years. Um, so that made all the cars a lot tighter and made it harder for us to differentiate between them. There's um, what we want to see that we're not seeing enough of is a good justification for what you, you're doing. You're doing some really neat things, and this is this is for everyone in general. I'm not talking about just the three cars here. You're doing some really neat things with your car. You're not really sure why you're doing it. You don't have the numbers to back them up in many cases. You don't have the re or there's a reasoning, and you know you're going the right direction but you don't know how far you're going the right direction. You're not sure it's worth all that extra cost or all that extra work. I try to tell the teams quite often, start with the simplest one design philosophy, it's not the only one. Start with the simplest design you, you can possibly come up with that meets the rules. If you can't come up with a way in numbers to prove that a way that's more complex or more expensive will be better, don't do it. It's supposed to be an engineering decision. You're supposed to go through and make calculations. You're supposed to do tests. You know, a lot of people are going through a lot of work to lower the engines, to cut the oil pans, to do things like that. Why are you doing that? Well, it moves the CG down lower. Yeah, we know that. How far did it move it? How does that change the weight transfer you have? Specific numbers. We want to see specific numbers. We don't want to just know that you're moving it down because it seems to be the right thing to do. We want to see those numbers. want to see more use of the tire data. All that tire data that you have available to you now, a lot of you are getting it, but you're not using it enough. You're not putting it into lap simulations enough. You're not going through the calculations of the numbers. You have all these nice graphs. You're putting the good work. Those of us who were students competing years ago would have killed for that information. Now you have that available, and that's great. I'm from Akron. We had good year there, and I still didn't have that information. Uh, the overall average of the car level is about the same as last year. We want to see very specific goals. Everybody says we want to save 5 or 10 pounds compared to last year. We want to see good durability. We want to see a lot of hard numbers of what you're trying to achieve. And we might even ask next year that you turn in those goals in September. That's something we have to discuss with SAE. It's something that we'll bring with them. But it's something that if we ask for them in September or not, your team ought to know. And if I ask five people on the team what the top three design goals for your car, all those people should be able to rattle it off really quickly. Understood? Because everybody on the team should know what the top three goals are for what the car is. And we find that that's very hard to do. And right now we're asking several different people and they're coming up with different answers. I want to mention one school, uh, Montreal. Are they here? Yes. That was the best design report I've ever seen. That was wonderful. When I read their design report, and maybe they'll be nice enough to share it with you, maybe not, that report, I can see exactly what their design goals were, what they were trying to achieve, what different configurations they were going to test to see which ones were best, how they were going to achieve those goals, and after the car was together, what testing and tuning processes they were going to go through to optimize the car after that. Unfortunately, they got a little behind and they didn't get to the point where they were able to do a lot of testing and tuning and all that, and that's why they didn't make the design finals. But I, congratulations, that was the best design report I've seen yet from the school. here in the design finals had very good suspensions. None of them made as much use of the tire data or had an understanding of the shocks as we want to see yet. What we've come to the conclusion is all three of these are very good race engineers. They're not the best design engineers, but because they're good race engineers, they're able to make things work. So last year we saw a lot more teams that really had the understanding of the physics and the engineering behind it. The engineers this year took the parts that they put together and figured out how to tune them and make them work. 
The ultimate teams are the ones that will be able to do both very well, and that's what we're striving for. That said, we're going to go to our third place team design. Western Washington. <laughs> looking car. If you were to put all these these three cars on display, have people look at which one they want to buy without getting to dive into all the numbers. This is the car they'd buy. Uh, it, just, it just looks like a race car and we're very impressed with the package. Everything's nice and compact. They were able to make everything fit very well within a small space. And on a tight course, that's very important. Um, all three cars, by the way, were between 454 pounds and 464 pounds. All three, on front weight percentage, were between 47.7 and 48.2 percent. All three have four-cylinder engines. The biggest difference between them may be the monocoque here and 10-inch wheels versus the tube steel frame and the 13-inch wheels. This is not to say that you need a 460-pound car on the nose with a four-cylinder engine to win the competition. We're looking more at your weight, your ability to answer questions and the testing and tuning and design processes that you went through to get there. These were the top three. Another thing we liked other than the overall packaging of the car was they had lots of dyno testing with different variables in the engine map. People who worked with the ECU had a good understanding of the ECU and did some things with it that other people were not doing. Um, that, that was very strong. We think this team has the best eye for design. If you just look at things, they just kind of look shaped right, and they're the right, uh, they look like they should work. Where they were lacking was the analysis behind it to prove to us that it would work. We want to see some more of that. Good reasons for their muffler placement. We like that. And as opposed to the automatic decision always, is okay, we're just going to route it out the back. They routed it down the side, and they had very good reasons for doing that. Um, the other thing that we liked on this one was the chain adjuster. This thing's not going to come loose on them. It's a rotating cam type, and that was the nicest chain adjuster of the three that we saw. Um, on we go to second place. Ooh. 